the Persian cat. This differs somewhat from the angora, the tail being generally longer, more like a table brush in point of form, and is generally slightly turned upwards, the hair being more full and coarser at the end, while at the base it is somewhat longer. The head is rather large, with less pointed ears, although these should not be devoid of the tuft at the apex, and also well furnished with long hair within, and of moderate size. The eyes should be large, full, and round, with a soft expression. The hair on the forehead is generally rather short in comparison to the other parts of the body, which ought to be clothed with long silky hair, very long about the neck, giving the appearance of the mane of the lion. The legs, feet, and toes should be well clothed with long hair and have well-developed fringes on the toes, assuming the character of tufts between them. It is larger in body, and generally broader in the loins, and apparently stronger made than the foregoing variety, though yet slender and elegant, with small bone, and exceedingly graceful in all its movements, there being a kind of languor observable in its walk, until roused, when it immediately assumes the quick motion of the ordinary short-haired cat, though not so alert. The colors vary very much, and comprise almost every tint obtainable in cats, though the tortoise shell is not, nor is the dark marked tabby, in my opinion, a Persian cat color, but has been got by crossing with the short-haired tortoise shell, and also English tabby, and as generally shows pretty clearly unmistakable signs of such being the case. For a long time, if not now, the black was the most sought after and the most difficult to obtain. A good rich deep black, with orange-colored eyes and long flowing hair, grand in mane, large and with graceful carriage, with a mild expression, is truly a very beautiful object, and one very rare. The best I have hitherto seen was one that belonged to Mr. Edward Lloyd, the great authority on all matters relating to aquariums. It was called Mimi, and was a very fine specimen, usually carrying off the first prize wherever shown. It generally wore a handsome collar, on which was inscribed its name and victories. The collar, as Mr. Lloyd used to coastly to observe, really belonged to it, as it was bought out of its winnings, and, according to the accounts kept, was also proved to have paid for its food for some considerable period. It was, as its owner laughingly said, his friend and not his dependent, and generally used to sit on the table by his side while he was writing either his letters, articles, or planning those improvements regarding aquariums for which he was so justly celebrated. Next in value is the light slate or blue color. This beautiful tint is very different in its shades. In some, it verges toward a light purplish or lilac hue, and is very lovely. In others, it tends to a much bluer tone, having a colder and harder appearance. Still beautiful by way of contrast. In all, the colors should be pure, even, and bright, not in any way mottled, which is a defect. And I may here remark that in these colors, the hair is generally a softer texture, as far as I have observed, than that of any other color, not excepting the white, which is also in much request. Then following the various shades of light tabbies, so light in the marking, having scarcely a right to be called tabbies. In fact, tabby is not a Persian color nor have I ever seen an imported cat of that color. I mean firmly, strongly marked with black, on a brown, blue, or gray ground, until they culminate in those of intense richness and density in the way of deep, harmonious browns and reds, yet still preserving throughout an extreme delicacy of line and tracery, never becoming harsh or hard in any of its arrangements or color, not as the ordinary short-haired tabby. 
the eyes should be orange yellow in the browns reds blues grays and blacks as far as my experience extends and i have had numerous opportunities of noticing i find this variety less reliable as regards temper than the short-haired cats less also in the keen sense of observing as in the angora and also of turning such observations to account either as regards their comfort their endeavor to help themselves or in their effort to escape from confinement in some cases i have found them to be of almost a savage disposition biting and snapping more like a dog than a cat and using their claws less for protective purposes nor have i found them so cosety in their ways as those of the short coats though i have known exceptions in both they are much given to roam as indeed are the russian and angora especially in the country going considerable distance either for their own pleasure or in search of food or when on the hunt after mature consideration i have come to the conclusion that this breed and slightly so the preceding are decidedly different in their habits to the short-haired english domestic cat as it is now generally called it may be however only a very close observer would notice the several peculiarities which i consider certainly exist these cats attach themselves to places more than persons and are indifferent to those who feed and have the care of them they are beautiful and useful objects about the house and generally very pleasant companions and when kept with the short-haired varieties form an exceedingly pretty and interesting contrast but as i have stated they certainly require more attention to their training and more caution in their handling than the latter i may here remark that during the time i have acted as judge at cat shows which is now over eighteen years it has been seldom there has been any display of temper in the short-haired breeds in comparison with the long though some of the former in some instances have not comported themselves with that sweetness and amiability of disposition that is their usual characteristic my attendant has been frequently wounded in our endeavor to examine the fur dentition etc of the angora persian or russian and once severely by a short hair hitherto i have been so fortunate as to escape all injury but this i attribute to my close observation of the countenance and expression of the cat about to be handled so as to be perfectly on my guard and to the knowledge of how to put my hands out of harm's way if a vicious cat is to be taken from one pen to another it must be carried by the loose skin at the back of the neck and that of the back with both hands and held well away from the person who is carrying it